from Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina. It's women's college basketball and the number one South Carolina Gamecocks return home undefeated as they welcome the Lady Bears of Morgan State. I'm Dave Weinstein alongside John Williams. It was a trip to Tobacco Road where they defeated UNC and Duke. And now, John, next up, it's Morgan State. I like to call that the Tobacco Road Tour where you got to go against high pressure, high energy arenas, and you got to see what you were made of, test your metal, and then see how the chips fall as they may after that. And so I think South Carolina was able to look at themselves, reflect, and find some things that they could work on that will translate, hopefully, in the SEC play. Well, in the win at Duke, it was a career high in points for Chloe Kitts. Yeah, Chloe Kitts, who is getting better with every game, coming off of a 14-point performance against Duke, running the floor like a gazelle, establishing herself in the post, putting the ball on the deck, getting all the way downhill for the finish, as well as showing off her ball handling ability and mid-range jumper. Many new faces this season for Morgan State. Freshman Tamaria Rumpf has started the last three games, and she's really stepped up, John. Yeah, aver averaging seven points a game, two rebounds. As a traditional freshman, she did not take the traditional route. She had to show that she was able to come in and implement herself in the offense, mid-range, open floor, as well as showing off that pretty floater she's got. First all-time meeting between South Carolina and Morgan State. John, a matchup between the SEC and the MEAC. Yeah, this is going to be a great matchup. Obviously, Morgan State is dealing with some newcomer woes as this is a young team that is trying to get themselves established and prepared for MEAC play, being at the top of the conference this year. Our officials tonight are Denise Brooks, Carla Fountain, and Nicole Brannon. And we're underway from Colonial Life Arena. The Gamecocks win the tip. Tessa Johnson pulls up. <laughs> Stay with South Carolina. Johnson getting the start. Freshman guard from Albertville, Minnesota. And she's starting alongside Pow Pow Hall, Kitts, and Sakima Walker getting the start in the middle for South Carolina. Hall for three. That's good. And who would have thought it? You see South Carolina coming out off the rails, knocking down the three right away because of their pressure and their abilities in the paint area. Everybody's gonna be prepared for that. And they're showing their ability to also spread the floor from three. Rumpf, Gabby Johnson, Payne, Joel Johnson, and Ponder getting the start tonight for Morgan State. That shot off the mark from Ponder. Here come the Gamecocks. Pow Pow finds Hall. Walker kicks it out. Hall, another three. Offensive rebound for Chloe Kitts. She's tied up. And it'll be Morgan State basketball. Yeah, Bree Hall there testing the heat check early. Well, Hall shot it well on the road trip. 15 points at UNC, 13 at Duke. She was a combined nine for 13 and six for eight from three. Well, she's part of the combo that has helped this South Carolina team balance themselves offensively, not only just on the inside, but also the out. Johnson for three. And Johnson. One of those players that can do a little bit of everything. She can shoot the three, she can put the ball on the deck, get mid-range, also can start the break for the game cut. She's gonna be a really good freshman for him. Now three for seven on the season from behind the arc. Came back for the UNC and Duke trip. Played but didn't score on the score sheet early tonight. This is Payne, under five, she pulls up. Another rebound for Chloe Kitts. I That's like her third. How, I like how Chloe Kitts is getting it and not just looking for point guards and guards to dribble the ball up, but showing her ability to push it in pace, too. Another tie up. This time it'll stay with South Carolina. Chloe coming off of that career high 14 point performance Sunday at Duke. She added nine rebounds and 11 points at UNC. Tessa Johnson. 
too strong. Hits her fourth board. Tied up once again. This time possession hour in favor of Morgan State. Well, Chloe Kitts going ahead and establishing herself early, being dominant on the boards. One of the things that South Carolina does is they out-rebound their opponents, meaning they get more chances to score the ball and to keep the ball away from the opposing team. And they have such a height advantage, Kitts at 6'2", Walker getting the start at 6'5". I haven't even seen Cardoso yet. And that shot is good. Morgan State is on the board. Joel Johnson, a grad student from Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, Joel Johnson showing her ability to not only establish herself in the post, but also somebody who can knock down the open three. Johnson pulls up and hits. You see what we talked about with Johnson, her ability to not only knock down the three, she can make it in rhythm. But then also, when you come out with the bad closeout, she can attack the high foot and get to the mid-range jumper. Five points for Tessa Johnson. This is Ponder. Oh, she responds for Morgan State. And we talked about the size advantage that South Carolina has over Morgan State, but Morgan State has post players that are also capable of spreading the floor from three. Ponder, the tallest player on the floor for Morgan State. At six foot tall. Pow, pow, off the glass and in. And pow, pow will draw the foul. And pow, pow all over the place. I've never seen anybody just mosey to the basket for a layup, but you see there Tessa Johnson getting to that mid-range jumper. And now you see here, Inside out play from Morgan State where they're able to penetrate pitch, draw the bigs in to protect the basket and knock down the three. Both teams have hit a pair of threes. Pow Pow hits the first. Such a consistent score for South Carolina. Tina Pow Pow has scored between 10 and 14 points in each game this season. She's outstanding from behind the arc. Yeah, she's just steady for the game, Cots, and she always looks calm, cool, and collected, stoic, but also can knock down the open three, which has been needed. She shoots the highest three-point percentage for the game, Cots. Rumpf can't convert. And Cox in a hurry. Pow, pow for three. Got it. And it leaves her hand so effortlessly, like she has practiced that shot over and over again and recognized when it was time to take and make it. Seven straight points for Pow Pow. The Gamecocks are three for five from behind the arc. We're gonna take a break from Colonial Life Arena. 5.41 left to go in the first. South Carolina leads Morgan State 15 to six. Some sad news, Carlton Thompson, better known as Gamecock Jesus, has passed away, a fixture, not just here in Colonial Life Arena, but at all Gamecocks athletic events. Had a moment of silence for him before the game and for the remainder of this season. He'll have a seat reserved, John, in his honor. Yeah, you always want to give flowers to the pioneers of the program that have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly and still stay true and true to the process. I only was able to meet him once, and when I did meet him, he pointed at my bow tie like, nice job, and so I wish I would have had more interactions with him, but he seemed like a very special individual. I wish I had more interactions with him as well, but incredibly nice guy, and certainly sadness today in Columbia with the news of his passing. 5.41 left to go in the first year inside Colonial Life Arena, and South Carolina leads Morgan State 15 to six. Hancox have out-rebounded the Lady Bears, John, seven to none. Yeah, man, I mean, we know that is what South Carolina holds at a premium. I mean, they out-rebound their opponents by 18. 55 is their average, meaning that they really do a good job of keeping the ball away from their opponents, giving themselves more opportunities to get themselves in an offensive rhythm. And when you have that as a premium, you usually play to higher percentages because of that. Six points come on two made three so far for Morgan State. This is Rumpf. Gets around Walker. 
Ponder. Shot no good, but offensive rebound for Morgan State. Two seconds on the shot clock. That's the call here. Looks like it's going to go against the Lady Bears. Foul will be on JL Butler. She picks up her first. It may have been some kind of moving screen situation there. And understanding that in order to get your teammate open, you got to set hard screens. That time she just moved a little bit. Pow Pow pulls up for three. Pow Pow, her first miss of the game. She leads all scorers with seven points. Rump, the freshman from Sacramento, California. It's help from Ponder. Going to be a turnover for the Lady Bears. Both teams do well in the turnover margin this season. Morgan State's plus 4.4, South Carolina plus 3.9. For Morgan State, John, it's just a matter of whether they can capitalize on the turnovers. I know that's a concern tonight for head coach Ed Davis, Jr. Yeah, you want to be consistent with the turnovers and creating them, but you also want to make sure that you are making shots that are contributed from those turnovers. And I think that is something that Coach Davis had talked about as far as they're getting the turnovers and creating the chaos, but there's nothing coming to fruition on the other end of the floor. Raven Johnson pulls up and hits. We literally saw Raven Johnson practice that shot over and over again. One of the new highlights that has been added to this already special South Carolina program. Players that can spread the floor from the three, but also all three levels. You see there, Raven Johnson knocking down the mid-range jumper. Featuring their guards so far tonight. All points for South Carolina coming from the guard position. Boy, yes. turnover for the Lady Bears. And you see here, Raven Johnson coming off of the DHO, recognizing that the defender was lagged on her. Pulls up for the jumper. Johnson, 11 points Sunday at Duke. Three for four from behind the arc. Converting from in close, that's Cardoso. It's just really difficult to stop Cardoso, especially when she establishes her, herself early in the paint area. All she has to do then is drop set. Even that point, the defender pushed her under the basket, but she's developed enough to have the size and strength to still get to her spots. Another turnover from Morgan State. South Carolina is on an 11-0 run. They've opened up a 19-6 lead here in the first. Emily Jones has checked in for Morgan State. Amari Smith as well. Johnson gets it inside to Cardoso. Yeah, and that's one of the premiums of having the size that South Carolina has. You have players, post players that can get down the floor very quickly, establish themselves early in the paint, see if they can get themselves an early duck in. And all you have to do then is just drop, step, and finish. The Gamecock basketball with a 21-6 lead. Cardoso averaging a double-double this season. 15 points, 12.1 boards. She has five double-doubles, including 15 points and 14 rebounds at Duke on Sunday. National Watkins will check in for South Carolina. Sophomore forward from right here in Columbia. Averaging 9.4 points per game. She's second in the SEC in blocks, only behind her teammate Cardoso. Full Wiley, too strong. For Wiley has been so impressive so far this season. Averaging 12 points per game. For Dawn Staley, head coach for South Carolina, in her 16th season. 12 straight 20 win seasons for Coach Staley, a couple of national championships in 2017 and 2022. Five Final Fours in the last eight years. Built a dynamite program here in Columbia. Nice touch from Joelle Johnson. She's got five. Yeah, Joelle Johnson has definitely tried to implement herself in attacking the post players of South Carolina. And they're going to need more of that from her for Morgan State to stay in this game. 
A response from Watkins. Watkins is so athletic, so dynamic. Not only can she hunt for duck ins and angles to get drop steps, but she can also put the ball on the deck and get to her one dribble finishes. In and out on the three and the rebound for Cardoso. Raven Johnson drops it off to Full Wiley who feeds Watkins. Watkins is over there smiling at Full Wiley as if I did not know you were going to do that. And it's always funny when you watch players completely surprised and have to laugh at the fact that you got them that dime. Such an unselfish team. Seeing the effects of them really liking each other. They share the basketball. Outstanding passers, players like Raven Johnson, Full Wiley. Here's a steal from Watkins. She's up ahead. Going for the dunk, John, just couldn't convert. Yeah, she didn't have enough speed under her for that. Usually she gets a fast break with a little bit more force, maybe a second dribble. But you see there, she makes up for it on the defensive end, doing what she does best by rejecting the shots. She blocked Butler, full Wiley. Shot no good. And the Morgan State basketball, the head coach for the Lady Bears is Ed Davis Jr. He's in his eighth season, over 100 wins at the helm from Morgan State. He was previously an assistant at Morgan State. And before that, 12 seasons as the head coach at Delaware State. So he's very familiar with the MEAC Conference. Absolutely, and he was the winningest coach at Delaware State and still holds that record. Just his ability to have a formula and stick with it. And Johnson turns defense into offense. It's a 27-8 lead for South Carolina. Yeah, and it's all starting on the defensive end right now. South Carolina is turning Morgan State over and making it really difficult for them to get in any type of offensive continuity. Seven turnovers already for Morgan State. Raven Johnson, that steal, she averages 3.1 per game. Once again, it's the game cocks the other way. Johnson, Bree Hall. Three seconds to get it into Cardoso, who splits two Lady Bears and scores for South Carolina. The end of the first quarter from here in Columbia. An impressive first quarter for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Cole Wiley feeds Watkins. South Carolina leads Morgan State 29 to 8 at the end of the first. are dominant on both ends so far. They lead 29 to 8. They're allowing just 51.9 points per game this season. Opponents are shooting 29%, just 25% from three. They've out-rebounded their opponents coming into tonight 258 to 155. This is a Gamecock team that gets second chance opportunities, but their opponents don't. And they turn their opponents over, averaging just under 10 steals per game. John, they already have four through one quarter. Well, one thing that South Carolina prides themselves on is their defensive three pillars. Protect the rim, pressure the ball, and make proper rotations. When they protect the rim, it's really hard for you to score. Easy baskets, high percentage baskets. When they pressure the ball, it's hard for you to get continuity offensively. And then when you rotate the ball, even when you get past the first level, there's always somebody there. So instead of it playing against five players, you're playing against six. Well, Wiley skips her way inside and draws contact. It's been six different scorers already for South Carolina. For Wiley, can get on the board here. 71% free throw shooter on the season. And this is the first. Wiley had nine points on Sunday at Duke. She only played three minutes at UNC. She started the season with five straight double-digit scoring games. Just no room inside for Rumpf, who is listed, John, at 5-2. Yeah, I'm on. I don't know about all that. But hey, she's got the heart of a 
five-seven kid. I'm gonna tell you that right now. The way she plays, she's fearless out there, and that's why she was our player to watch. Unfortunately, she had to go up against six-three Watkins. Turnover for the Gamecocks. This is Joelle Johnson the other way from Morgan State. And we had that conversation with Coach Don Staley about Raven Johnson scoring the ball more. Right now, sometimes I think she looks at to facilitate first, and that's great out of a point guard, but she also can prove me wrong. It proves you wrong with the three ball. Seven points for Raven Johnson. Shooting 42% from behind the arc this season. Timeout, Morgan State. And that brings us to a break here on the floor. Nine minutes left to go in the second. South Carolina leads Morgan State 33 to 8. South Carolina leads Morgan State 33 to 8 early here in the second quarter. Gamecocks are shooting it really well so far. They're 13 for 20, 65%. This is an offense that averages 92 points per game. They've dropped 100 on four of the seven teams they played so far this season, shooting 50% from the field. The difference this year, John, though, they're shooting 38% from behind the arc. And tonight, it's four for eight. Yeah, I mean, against their opponents, it's nearly a 50-point margin. I mean, that means they are doing what they do best at a consistent clip. They're post dominance, they're open floor, easy baskets. Once you show too much attention in the paint, they then have the ability to burn you from the perimeter. Defensively, they're holding teams to 50. So they're also doing their job, talking about our three defensive pillars, on that end of the floor as well. Okay, five players averaging double digit points. Seven players have scored already tonight for South Carolina. Pow Pow leads the way with seven points. Raven Johnson has seven as well. The great balance sharing the basketball this season, averaging 21.7 assists per game. This lockdown defense has given Morgan State all sorts of trouble. They get a piece of that shot attempt from Gabby Johnson. For Wiley, a tough shot. She'll draw contact. That's going to be called on Kaya Ponder. She picks up her second. And that is what makes Full Wiley so difficult to guard. I mean, she is just so shifty, understands change of pace, which makes it almost impossible for one on one defenders to stay in front of her. And she noticed there she had an isolation, took full advantage of it, got herself two free ones. Coach Staley called her a generational talent. She's just so special the way she approaches both sides of the basketball. She wants to be better. Her three-level score, she's unselfish. And game days seem to bring out the best in her. She has a great feel for the game, great intuition for the game. And she has a ton of similarities to John Wall to me. As far as somebody who can, when they get out in the open floor, it's just a blur, and then just has the creativity to pick it up on the drop of a hat. It's a pretty good comparison with a highlight reel player. Oh, yeah. This is Alston. Ardoso, the rebound. She's trying to feed Watkins, who thought she was tripped up. That's something to say to one of our officials. Passing on the open look. Instead, it's Gibbs who pulls up baseline. And Gibbs hits a tough two. And we talked about that is what South Carolina does. They put you in conflict and make you have to take and make tough twos on a consistent basis. You see this open floor situation. Yeah, Watkins is definitely just as athletic and as coordinated as she is. She just doesn't fall for no reason. Ashlyn Watkins has two double-doubles this season, one of them against Maryland, one of them against Clemson. Season high in points is 14 against Mississippi Valley State. She's someone who averages just 4.9 points and 3.1 boards as a freshman last season, so the number's way up for Watkins. 
More than doubling both categories so far this season for Coach Staley. Well, I think she's understanding Don Staley's system, especially from that post position. You are going to be highly successful if you are in shape and can run the floor, get down the floor before the defense gets set, establish yourself by being physical, get yourself the angle that you need, and all you have to do, you don't have to do too much, is drop, step, and finish. And foul's gonna be called on Morgan State, and Joelle Johnson who picks up her second. Just a wealth of talent at that forward position for South Carolina when you think players like Watkins and Fagan come off the bench. And that can be a starting duo for Final Four contender, no doubt. Hall from the wing. Bree Hall spent a ton of time in the gym this summer, but also not only for herself, but I think to prove the other people wrong. I think that a lot of folks miss did not think that South Carolina was going to be at the level that they are at right now at number one in the nation. They were, you know, projected to be six, but Bree Hall has been the spark plug for this team in that, just showing her ability to not only run the floor, but shoot the three. Full Wiley again will go to the line. Bree Hall. A pair of three-pointers tonight for South Carolina had a great game on the road against UNC. Coach Staley said she played like an experienced guard who's been to two Final Fours. She's been working. She's wanted a performance like this on both sides of the ball. Coach Staley was just hoping she could bottle it up and play that way throughout the rest of the season. She's been great tonight so far. Gets a rest here for Wiley misses the first. Just thinking about Bree Hall, she is the epitome of a culture kid. She waited her time. You know, played limited minutes, but were under great players before her that taught her the ropes, the way. And now she is in a situation where she is in that leadership role and is going to teach the next wave of players that can also bring forth good energy, good effort on the floor moving forward. Thirty-nine to ten is our score here in the second quarter. Gabby Johnson, the leading scorer on the season for Morgan State, looking to make something happen. Under ten, Cha all over her. Joelle Johnson, great defense from Chloe Kitts. That's Tessa Johnson with the rebound. Pow pow, delivers to Kitts. Yeah, I honestly don't think Kitts thought that she was going to be that open and that uncontested for that. Gabby Johnson, high off the glass, no good. Another rebound for Chloe Kitts. It's taken away by Morgan State. Chloe now has seven rebounds for South Carolina. And that's what makes Morgan State so dangerous as well. Like when you get the rebound and you think you have the fast break, they're jamming you. Jaw is able to get to the basket. The freshman forward from Alexandria, Virginia. Didn't play at Duke in just one minute at UNC. Getting some time here in the first half against Morgan State. Eight different scores now for South Carolina. I do like Jaw's game. She's very aggressive. She's a downhill guard. She rebounds well and defends hard. Shot no good for Gabby Johnson. Fagan trying to get it to Kitts. It's a turnover for South Carolina. Six turnover for the Gamecocks. See there, Ja just recognizing on the ghost screen that she had the opening and took advantage of that space. Ja, another great get for Coach Staley, the number 40 player in the class of 2023. You get it, her talent is just oozing. Joel Johnson makes her move. Fagan stays with her. The fall away, no good. Pow Pow comes up with it for the Gamecocks. 
Up ahead, finds Fagan. It's an easy formula. You got post players that are in shape and can run the floor. Doesn't matter how fast the team is. If you can do that on a consistent clip, it's been known for South Carolina's team to wear you down as the quarters progress. And so far, they are on a constant run. It's like a track meet for the Gamecocks. 10 assists on a 16 field goal so far for the Gamecocks. 10 seconds for Rump. A whistle and a foul that's going to go against South Carolina. See here. Pow Pow with her head up, just recognizing Fagan is in no man's land on an island there for an easy finish. Ja picks up her first foul. It's actually the first foul on South Carolina tonight. And clean basketball. Fagan in the post. Turns, fires, and hits. And Fagan brings a different type of aspect to South Carolina's roster from the post position. She played wing when she was in high school, so has the ability to step out and knock down that short corner jumper as well as elbow. Really talented player, junior forward from Ellenwood, Georgia. Joel Johnson, a deep three. Short. Fagan with the rebound. Here's Pow Pow. She'll push it up to Ja. Some contact. An offensive foul. Called on Sanaya Ja. She picks up her second. Another look, John, at the foul on Ja. Yeah, it seemed like a charge. Like, as far as uh, the defender was there and steady, I was wondering if her foot was on that arc area, but it doesn't seem like it was based on the replay. Fagan rejects pain. This is a South Carolina team that leads the nation in blocks per game, averaging over 10. It in, rolls around the rim and doesn't go down. Morgan State now has two field goals in their last 13 minutes and 45 seconds. Just not going in for the Lady Bears, John. Yeah, that was as unlucky as you could get for Sadeja Payne there. Definitely had herself a, a situation, and she's actually really good at the mid-range jumper. And they haven't seen much daylight, daylight at the basket, and even there, that was a tough two. But I've seen her make that from time to time. Payne started the first three games of the season, off the bench the last five, got the start tonight. And a turnover here, an opportunity for Morgan State. And a foul called on South Carolina. Keela Johnson was ready to convert on the break. Yes, and what was impressive was how quick South Carolina was able to get back into fray on a normally a easy bang, bang, fast break situation. That's called on Raven Johnson. She picks up her first. Just the third foul on the Gamecocks. A whistle. Is the shot clock off here, John? I have no clue exactly what the call was for. I was looking for like off ball movement, maybe some physicality there, but you could be right on the clock. It was off by 10 seconds. Said 26, they set it to 16. And we'll stay with Morgan State. It's a Morgan State team that averages 58 points per game. Doesn't shoot it that well, 35% overall, and just 
from behind the arc. They only have one player averaging double digits so far this season. That's Gabby Johnson, just over 10. Rumpf gets inside. Ah, pretty basket from Tamarie Rumpf, the freshman from Sacramento. Yes, a beautiful finish for her. Just getting to the lane, understanding that she had to get to that hop step in order to get the space she needed. Another look at the basket from Rumpf. Yeah, you see her. I mean, she's fighting against a storm of trees there. Finds a way still to get to open space on the floor to get a layup. And obviously, open space isn't the same for her as it is for most because of her size. She's very quick. Having trouble finding room to operate tonight. Forty-five to twelve lead for the Gamecocks. Pow pow for three. Rebound is ripped away by Morgan State. That's pain. Yeah, the last three possessions, pain has been active. Whether trying to put some pressure in the paint area on drives, or just trying to get rebounds and start the break for Morgan State. Tessa Johnson was hot early for the Gamecocks. She'll drive, pulls up, and hits. And you see why she is going to be such a special player for South Carolina. Teams that are really good at guarding the three, as well as protecting the paint. There is an area of advantage in the mid-range that she presents and can provide for the Gamecocks. She's the Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year in 2023, averaging 24 points per game as a senior. Now the turnover here for the Lady Bears. Johnson, another McDonald's All-American for Coach Staley. 2,000-point scorer. Pow Pow had to be alert. An open look for Fagan. Cardoso gives the Gamecocks a second opportunity. Only for a moment, it's Morgan State basketball. Yeah, and one thing is, is if you do get a second chance or offensive rebound if you're South Carolina, Morgan State, even though they're small, they swarm like bees. Eleventh turnover for Morgan State. And check that twelfth. Ten seconds for Raven Johnson. Finds Cardoso. She draws contact. And Camila Cardoso will head to the line. That was called on Amari Smith, her first. Now, I know that there wasn't an actual make in this situation. I was more impressed with the offensive system that South Carolina executed, really spreading out this Morgan State defense that was trying to protect the paint. They moved the ball from one side of the floor to the other without any resistance. Even though there was a little bit of pressure on them, they seemed unfazed by it. And maybe that tobacco road tour that they took was able to help them deal with that a little bit. Having those types of experiences are going to help the Gamecocks moving forward in situations where a lot of teams may have turned the ball over. Eight points now for Cardoso. Which Davis knew she'd be a challenge. You asked him about combating Cardoso, and he said, you know, there are a couple on the roster that played her when she was at Syracuse, but she's gotten so much better at South Carolina. And it's tough, it's a double-edged sword, because you have to close out on the shooter if they pack it in. There's so many variables. Their game plan is going to be to contain Cardoso as much as they can. Don't let her go crazy in the post without any support. But it's really a double-edged sword the way South Carolina is shooting this season. Well, it's not the same as last year where 
it didn't matter. Obviously, you got an Aaliyah Boston. You can toss it down there, and she'll score on five players, and there's nothing you can do. This, you see more balance offensively with South Carolina, where they can get the ball into the paint. Cardoza can finish, can create, but also they can show their ability to finish from the perimeter. How about that pass from Raven Johnson to Pow Pow? That'll close out the half. South Carolina will go into halftime, John, with a 51-12 lead over Morgan State. Yeah, South Carolina is just running their system. Nothing is changing for them. They're not playing outside themselves based on who they're playing against. They're just playing Don Staley Gamecock ba basketball. Gamecock shoots 65.5% in the first half. They lead Morgan State 51-12 at halftime from Columbia. Fifty-one to twelve lead at the half for South Carolina. The Williams family is in the house. There's a birthday girl, John. Oh yeah, that's my daughter Sayla. Happy ninth birthday to you, baby girl. Dave and John back with you at halftime. Coach Daly mentioned that the thing that really impressed her the most up in North Carolina, the wins against UNC and the win against Duke, was they showed the ability to win in different ways, and John, they're winning in every way possible tonight. Well, yeah, we talked about sometimes that pressure can harden you and put you in situations that you might not think you'd be in. And so here you're seeing their ability to have balanced offense. You take away the inside, they show their ability to knock down the three. You take away the three, they can take the inside. They just play simple basketball. They get out in the open floor, make high percentage shots close to the basket first. But then if you try to take that away, they can also show their abilities on the perimeter. And we're going to take a look at some highlights from the first half. They hold the rebounding advantage 24 to 8. And Chloe hits. She has seven of them. Well, one thing she did is she creates more opportunities. We talked about it. Missed shots, you have to be able to bring it down and contain the possession. Then from there, that possession can give you more and more opportunities to get rhythm. So the more times you can get a hold of that ball, the better. It's already over her season average in rebounds, which is 5.6. And the three-point prowess tonight for South Carolina, they're 5 of 10. And everyone's gotten involved, John. When South Carolina shows their ability to spread the floor at this clip, it's only going to lead to a ton of fear all over the leagues. Now, with them being able to do that, already knowing that they can finish at the basket, it makes them for a terrifying, terrifying group. Two three-point makes for Bree Hall, one for Pow Pow, one for Raven Johnson, one for Tessa Johnson. Here's your game summary so far. Point field goals, of course, in favor of South Carolina, but the Gamecocks really lead in every category. You saw the four different players with three point makes. They're shooting 65.5% from the field, 50% from three, 80% from the free throw line. Those numbers good, John? Those are high percentage plays right there. Everything they've done has been within their system, within their rhythm of play, and so it has led to high percentages that you've just run off. Morgan State will start with the basketball here in the second half. Joel Johnson leading the way for the Lady Bears with five points so far tonight. Ponder looking for help. Instead, she'll fire over Cardoso. Shot no good. And the rebound once again for Chloe Kitts, her eighth. You know, one thing we talked about Morgan State has to do is they have to find a way to put in more or better, higher percentage shots offensively. And them taking contested jumpers against South Carolina is only going to lead to a recipe for disaster. It was a nice defensive play on the other end from Joel Johnson. He denied Cardoso on the interior. 51 to 12 is our score here. The start of the third quarter. Hall, the floater, no good. And the rebound for Gabby Johnson. She'll look to push. There's two on three, so she pulls it back. Ponder in the post. Joel Johnson shot off the mark, and the rebound for Raven Johnson.
Johnson from the wing. Man, that's just a good rhythm play. So much attention being put on the paint area that Raven Johnson, once she spread the floor, shared the ball, it came right back to her and there was no defender in front of her. She was the SEC Co-Player of the Week back on November 21st. That was after a 17 assist game. She's scoring tonight, 10 points to go along with two assists. Rump. Offensive rebound for Payne. Working in the paint around Cardoso, but the height of Cardoso really bothered Sedasia Payne. Yeah, that's one thing about Payne, is she is fearless. She did not mind going up against Cardoso. Brie Hall delivers from the corner. And we talked about it. At this point, South Carolina is in such a rhythm. Like, even in the fast break situations, and Morgan State not getting back to contest. They are putting themselves in those situations to get high percentage threes. It's a nice move from Payne. Unable to convert. They get it inside to Cardoso. Kicks it to Pow Pow. All thought about it, instead she'll drive. Pow Pow for three. Got it! Yeah, that's just terrifying. Terrifying basketball. Simply because the ball is moving. It's got life to it. It's going from one side of the floor to the other. Defense is shifting, making them pay consistently. Time out, Morgan State. 6.50 left to go in the third quarter. South Carolina leads Morgan State 60 to 12. Great crowd on hand here inside Colonial Life Arena to watch the number one team in the nation. They lead Morgan State 60 to 12. Before the break, a couple of made threes, one from Bree Hall, who's now three for four from behind the arc, and one for Tahina Pow Pow, who's now two for four. Pow Pow leads all SEC players in three-point percentage coming into tonight, 10th in the nation. What a get for Coach Staley and her former head coach at Oregon, Kelly Graves, had this to say about her. He said, you know, Tahina's skill set is incredible. She reminds me of Sabrina Ionescu and her ability to affect the game in so many ways. A strong rebounder, an uncanny passer, an elite three-point shooter, an unselfish teammate. And she plays the game with a huge smile, just a, a baller to the max, John, with a really high basketball IQ. Well, one thing I've recognized right away is her ability to play with poise. She is un... She is unfazed by pressure and does a really good job of just facilitating when she needs to be at that point guard position. The Gamecocks were unfazed by that pressure. Chloe Kitts draws the foul on Joelle Johnson. Johnson picks up her third. One thing we just saw from Morgan State is they threw a little press there, even off of the missed shot. It doesn't matter. They're going to try to apply pressure because normally they press off of made shots. But here, they have not been able to put the ball in the basket and have to find some way to get some type of offensive circulation and by that being turnovers. And so they tried to put South Carolina on the tip of their toes, but they're too good, such a good team. It's just difficult to do that. Coach Davis talked to us about the matchup and he said, listen, I'm, I'm a coach that looks at matchups, looks at scoring margins. The biggest thing I look at is what each athlete in the starting five of the opposing team brings, and South Carolina brings so much. He said, I haven't seen anyone in the country that can slow them down. Duke did a little bit, but Duke scored. If you're not going to score with South Carolina, you're going to have a problem. They run into a problem tonight. That shot no good from Butler. And a whistle that will go against J.L. Butler. Speaking of that Duke game, I mean, Duke really came out hot, showing their ability to knock down the three on a consistent clip. They got out in the open floor and ran, and it started with defense. And so they tried to speed South Carolina up offensively. And offensively, South Carolina did fine in that first quarter. But whenever they could capitalize on an open floor situation, they got the open shots and made them. Well, Kitts capitalizes inside. It's a 64-12 lead for the Gamecocks. 
Yeah, Chloe Kitts is such a smart, cerebral player. Just really well at moving without the ball, but then also, whenever the defense rests, she can capitalize on it based on her positioning. It's four points and a career high, 12 rebounds. There's a rebound for Cardoso. Oh, and Rumpf picks the pocket of Pow Pow. An easy basket for Rumpf. Yeah, and we talked about Rumpf being a defensive specialist. She got four steals in her last game against St. Francis, which I think she's going to be one of those players that can put a lot of pressure on the primary ball handler in the MEAC, make life terrible for him. Almost a steal for Raven Johnson. Instead, it's Rumpf. Gets into the paint. Gets it to Gabby Johnson. Pondo against Kitts. Another rebound for Chloe Kitts. She has 13. Raven Johnson slowing him down. Get to the sets. Run the, the offense and see if you can get something high percentage. Johnson from the elbow. Clockwork, baby. 12 points for Raven Johnson over her season average of 10.7. Career high was 18. That was against South Dakota State earlier this season. Crowd getting behind the defense of South Carolina here. Rumpf moves her way into the paint. Feeds Ponder. I think Ponder hurt herself on that landing. Hits converts on the other end. Yeah, Ponder is going to go down for a moment. We're going to have a timeout here on the floor. 3.36 left to go in the third. South Carolina all over Morgan State, 68-16. Kaya Ponder was shaken up a bit before the break. And with two bigs out, she's really having to play down low for Morgan State. Ideally, Coach Davis told us that she's a three. She's having to play the four. She's been out a couple of years with injury. They wanted to get her contested, want her to develop an attitude to win under this pressure. But she's really playing her first year all the way through this season for Morgan State. And she's their leading scorer tonight, tied with Joelle Johnson with five points. But we'll see how she recovers from this injury, John. She got hurt before the break. Yeah, she's been a bright spot for the Bears. I mean, just strong. She's post capable is what I like to put it. Somebody who is capable of playing the post, but naturally is a wing. And you see that with her ability to put the ball on the deck. Against Washington at Ventus, she had 18 points and 10 rebounds. If she can start to reciprocate that on a consistent clip, she could be a problem in the Mia. Speaking of problems, it's full Wiley. She's fouled. Foul be called on Rumpf. Her first top speed for Full Wiley went flying. So Full Wiley to the line. She's four for six from the charity stripe tonight. Yeah, the crowd went kind of crazy when she got fouled and hit the deck a little bit hard there, but. I mean, I've been watching Fool Wally play since her high school days, and she is built for it tough. I mean, she has been hacked every which way and has gotten up unscathed. And she has six points tonight, all from the line. 70 now for South Carolina. Smith hands off to Johnson. She'll draw a whistle. It's going to be called on Mylasia Full Wiley. She picks up her first. We talked about Don Staley and making sure that she is up to par on the defensive end of the floor. We talked about her limited minutes against UNC, but was able to respond the right way against Duke. Right there, you know, her ability to stunt, you could see it was a little bit lazy. And so one thing that Coach Don Staley wants is a standard of defensive excellence, especially from the guard position. And when, when she was in high school, she didn't have to do that. 
She was just the primary focus where you wanted to keep her fresh on the floor at all times so that offensively she could give you what's needed and necessary to put the ball in the basket or facilitate for herself as well as her teammates. Golden State was unable to capitalize off the turnover. Here is Full Wiley. Spin move, scoop shot. No good. Loose ball. Golden State comes up with it, but only for a moment. There's a steal from Raven Johnson. Finds Watkins in the paint. Can't get the bounce. Gets it on the follow-up. You think Watkins is stat buffing over here? Watkins is such a presence inside. Uh -oh. There she is on the steal. Ashlyn Watkins up ahead. Here it comes. That one, John, closer than the first attempt. I, I could say so. I mean, like I said, we know that she's capable of putting the ball in the basket and dunking that thing. She's almost too relaxed on her gather. I know that the girl can get off the earth. In the first game, Cock to dunk a basketball last season. That was at Clemson. Sometimes you got weight room legs, man. Like I'm. We talked to their strength and conditioning coach before the game started. They are in the weight room every time they have openings to do so. And so, the legs might be burnt out, man. Here's a run for the line. That's the first. You can have those tobacco road legs, man. She's Gatorade Player of the Year in South Carolina in 2022 is Ashlyn Watkins, number 12 player in the class of 2022. Still only a sophomore, so much young talent on this Gamecocks roster, and there's one of the young stars for South Carolina in full Wiley. We talked about full Wiley's creative abilities. This is Gibbs, runs out of room, so it's Smith. Open up ahead, it's Full Wiley. Beautiful finish from Malaysia, Full Wiley. Didn't do anything fancy, just looked like she slapped boards on her. That's like a dunk. But Wiley has 10. See Full Wiley in the open floor on X Games mode. And then you see here, Another open floor situation where she just finishes strong. This is where she thrives. When she is out in the fast break, to be able to do what she's capable of doing at the speed that she's capable of reaching is uncanny. 3,000 point score in high school. Second, rebound for Raven Johnson. No let up in the Gamecocks. Up ahead, Cardoso. Yeah, we talked about South Carolina's bigs and their ability to run the floor. It just makes life easy for players like Raven Johnson, who is looking ahead, plays with her head up, and sees the open man. 20 assists now for the Gamecocks. Rump. It's a tough shot. We talked about Rumpf when she gets to the middle of the floor. Good things happen, and so she's got to be more consistent at that for the Lady Bears. Johnson will pull it back and set up the offense. Watkins turns, fires, and hits. And that all started with Raven Johnson recognizing that there wasn't going to be a fast break opportunity there. So what she did was reestablish the offense, got South Carolina set for a high percentage shot. It's the end of the third quarter from Columbia. South Carolina leads Morgan State 80 to 23. Fourth quarter coming up next. 
welcome back South Carolina with a big lead over Morgan State. We get ready to start the fourth quarter. They've held Morgan State's leading scorer this season, Gabby Johnson, in check. Gabby just has two points tonight. She's a preseason second team all-conference selection in the MIAC all-rookie team last year. And Coach Davis told us, you know, last year she was one of the top freshmen in the MIAC, but played on a very good basketball team. A lot of those teammates that she had are now gone. And Gabby this season might, might stick out like a sore thumb. She doesn't have as many players to help her out. So Coach Davis really wants her to perform above and beyond what she did in the past, especially because they don't have as many backups eligible to play yet. And he told us she just really has to learn how to handle the pressure on her own until we get some of those backups when January gets around. And she's trying to score, they just need her to be a little more aggressive. Yeah, you can definitely tell, like, she's trying to let the game come to her because that is how she was able to score at a high clip for Morgan State last year as a freshman. But, you know, averaging 10 points, two assists, two steals, and is, is, is still well done, but she needs to do more in order for Morgan State to have a chance. She's like the Swiss Army knife for this team. She can defend, she can shoot the ball, she can get in the open floor and attack in the one-on-ones. She needs to do more of that. She'll bring it up now for the Lady Bears. A local player out of Baltimore, playing for our hometown school. shot is true for Venicia Gibbs. Four points for Gibbs. Beautiful. Beautiful. We talked about it. She thrives in chaos. Like whenever she's in the paint, in the jungle, with the Lions, Tigers, and Bears, she knows how to respond. 12 points now for Full Wiley. Rouse the crowd once again. Under 10 for Austin. Joel Johnson against Kitts. More great defense from Chloe Kitts. She had no space to Joel Johnson. Quarter numbers for South Carolina have been outstanding all season long, John. Yeah, they find a way to get it going second and fourth, where they start to find themselves a rhythm. We saw them play against North Carolina and Duke. They were really able to turn it on at the end. And we talked about their, it's not that they turn it on, it's just they stay consistent offensively and defensively. And so because they wear down teams consistently, it's really tough to beat this team. And they will close out games against solid opponents this season. Played the likes of Notre Dame, Maryland, Maryland UNC, yeah. Duke. And I think that a lot of teams try to figure out and understand why you know, South Carolina, Coach Don Staley, they schedule teams like Morgan State. I think that's a huge thing for Coach Don Staley to recognize teams that are in the in that HBCU realm that don't get as much linear attention, don't get the, the TV time, don't get the opportunities to play against some of the better teams out there. She is one of those teams that'll take a chance and play those teams. When she was coaching out at Temple, it was that same thing where she couldn't get a lot of teams to schedule her because it's it's beneficial for them if they win, but nothing comes out of it for the teams that they're trying to schedule that may be a little bit higher than them. And so with that being said, I think that, you know, it's something to be said about playing these types of teams that don't get these opportunities. Alston banks in the three. It's a great opportunity for Morgan State to play the number one team in the nation. It's a really difficult matchup, a tremendous exposure. They get that experience that can only help them heading into MIAC play. Yeah, you just think about that. Like, how, how many people are going to be able to say that, that they played against the top team in the nation and were able to do something? Maybe something goes well, a play, a possession that works in your favor, and you can use that to catapult you into your conference play. And I think that they will learn from this and learn some of the experiences in the, the MIAC that will help translate. Third foul called on Full Wiley. 
That's where the Alston will head to the line for Coach Davis. First free throw attempt of the season for Alston. She drains it. She's played in all eight games this season off the bench, now nine counting tonight, averaging just over 10 minutes per game. Likes to shoot the three, 22 over 29 shots this season, coming into tonight from behind the arc. I saw her bank in that three-point shot moments ago. Yeah, and the thing about Austin is that she can continue to be more consistent there. Play defense at the pressure that Coach Davis wants. She gives herself an opportunity to get more minutes on the floor. Almost a turnover, instead it turns into a basket for Sanaya Fagan. Fagan has six, right at her season average. Payne unable to find some room, but she gets it to Joel Johnson. Tough shot defended by Walker. In the corner, that's Austin. For Wiley there defensively for South Carolina. It's good to see Ponder back out there for Morgan State. Both teams now even in offensive rebounds, seven apiece. Lady Bear is doing a nice job on the offensive glass. Yeah, and you know, you raise your level when you play against high level basketball. And so they're understanding how to compete against South Carolina, especially when it comes to offensive boards. Oh, Gabby Johnson is swatted by Walker, stays with it. Four points for Johnson. It's always great that South Carolina has the ability to block shots, but you also have to make sure that the ball maintains in Gamecock's hands after the shot is blocked. Ja, too strong from the corner. Another look. Gabby Johnson, who stays with it, and gets the follow-up. And yeah, that's, uh, that's why I like steals more than blocks, even though blocks are great, and they create categorical benefits. Steals are automatic possession changers. How about the deep three from Tessa Johnson, who has 10. She won the three-point contest in high school. Outstanding shooter. Austin off the mark. More offensive rebound from Morgan State. Yeah, more offensive rebounds mean more possession. Sometimes your offense is your best defense where you can keep the ball out of South Carolina's hands who have been able to score the ball consistently. Gabby Johnson pulled up and good contact. Take another look at this deep three from Tessa Johnson. In front of Gabby Johnson. Yeah, Tessa Johnson just recognizing the space. At this point, she's going to be, she's going to continue to earn more minutes on the floor just based on how she's played the game, her mid range ability, and then also the ability to spread the floor from three. Coach Staley said she can shoot it, but she's balanced because she always has her head up when she's penetrating, so you don't know whether she's passing or shooting. All sorts of range for the freshman from Minnesota. 88 to 33 is our score. It's about midway through the fourth quarter. Jaws double teamed, lost the handle, and it's a turnover for South Carolina. And they're 14th. And you're seeing Morgan State try some things really to speed up South Carolina, especially this young, young core group that they have in here, and really try to see if they can get some turnovers and opportunities. Speaking of turnovers, there's Tessa Johnson. Turns a steal into two points. Oh, yeah, she recognized that the her, the offense was a little bit delayed on the pass, was able to shoot the gap. And, Get the steal and lay. Three point 
three-point shot, no good. The rebound for Ja. Ja will look to push. Three on one here for South Carolina. Not on the same page. They get it inside to Fagan. And a great catch from Fagan, bringing it down to gather herself, get balance, and then go right up for the finish. She has excellent hands, tremendous ball skills. Eight points now for Fagan. Rumpf. Joel Johnson in the paint. He's defended by Fagan, who pulls down the rebound. Full Wiley. Around the back, and in! That is, that is must-see TV. She's over here playing with her food. She's just a magical player for South Carolina. Rumpf on the drive, no good for Wiley. Gets it to Johnson for the layup. Pushing closer to 100. They've got 96. Timeout, Morgan State. Well, more Colonial Life Arena magic from Malaysia for Wiley. Two of her 14 points on the night. Big lead for the Gamecocks over the Lady Bears. And welcome back to Colonial Life Arena. 325 left to go. South Carolina leads 96 to 34. Make sure you stay with us the rest of the way. The South Carolina has certainly put on a show. More to go. But when this is over, I want to check out South Carolina Clemson basketball game, men's basketball. It's a tight one. Incox lead by two. Both teams are undefeated, both playing really good basketball this season, John. Yes, and it's great to see that for the state of South Carolina men's basketball. But at this point, you know, you want to you wanna see these types of rivalries go on. And last year, that, that rivalry went down to the wire. And so it made for good basketball. I hope that it continues. Fagan with the rebound for the Gamecocks, who continue to push for Wiley, feeds Johnson. Yeah, it looks like South Carolina's gonna hit that century mark. It's a nice 16 points for Tessa Johnson. Fagan with the steal. And here's Ja. Josh showing her athleticism. Ability to hang in the air, draw the foul, still finish. 100 points for South Carolina. And we'll look to add to that total. Great pass from Fagan. Look at that hang time. Now Fagan with the rebound and the putback. 102 for the Gamecocks. Jones. Rumpf over Fagan. What a shot. Yeah, Rumpf has showed her ability to score in that mid-range area. High, high percentage there. You picked the right player to watch from Morgan State. She has 11. That leads the Lady Bears tonight. And she's not forcing it. She's just taking what the defense is giving her but also using her attributes to get her to those spots that she likes to get to on the floor. For Wiley to John. A freshman, a freshman. The future's bright here in Columbia. Absolutely. has been a bright spot for Morgan State. Really tough shot over the 6'5 Walker. But Wiley comes down with it for South Carolina. And it's a turnover. Two and one for Morgan State. Fagan gets back. Yeah. 
Yeah, we talked about Rump's ability to create turnovers and get steals, and right there, she timed full Wiley's hop step perfectly. Tessa Johnson, who got the start tonight for the Gamecocks, gets it inside a Walker, and it's bad to back out. Miscommunication that time between Full Wiley and Walker. Seconds for Emily Jones. Look to get it inside. Butler. Contact. Walker. Will pick up the foul. Sakima Walker got the start tonight at the center position for South Carolina. Began her career at Rutgers, transferred to Juco level. She was Juco Player of the Year last season. She's going to play a big part for the Gamecocks, John. It was the backup center to Cardoso, but she got the start tonight. Yes, she did, and the coaching staff has been pleased with how she's been practicing and playing extremely hard. And when she is given the minutes, she's doing a little bit more and more as she gets more time and more experience on the floor. Winding down, and guys can just dribble it out. Get one last look at the ball skills of Mylasia Full Wiley. And a nice hand from the crowd here inside Colonial Life Arena. South Carolina defeats Morgan State 104 to 38. Gamecocks remain undefeated. They are 8 and 0, 5 and 0 here at home. And Morgan State drops to 3 and 6. 0-3 oh, on the road. John, all around impressive win for South Carolina. Yeah, we got to see the full balance of South Carolina showing their ability to score inside out, but also great defensive effort and just taking away the open floor situations, making it tough on ball, straight line drives, whatever you want, South Carolina was able to deliver. Another 100-point performance for the Gamecocks. We'll play next on Sunday, December 10th against Utah. That'll be in Uncasville, Connecticut in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame Showcase on ESPN. Next up for Morgan State, the Charm City Hoops Classic against UMBC. That'll do it for us here inside Colonial Life Arena. For John Williams and the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Weinstein saying so long from Columbia. South Carolina defeats Morgan State 104 to 38.